Hi everybody, Dr. Joe here, and today we're going to talk about the serve of Ben Shelton and do a little biomechanics breakdown of it. As a reminder, biomechanics is a subject I teach at the college level. I also spent several years in a biomechanics lab, so we're going to get into some nitty-gritty details, but we're going to cover it in a way that I think anyone can understand. So let's just first watch Ben serve. This one he happens to hit 149 miles an hour, so clearly he generates great force. But what I want to talk about is first this position. Because a lot of people see this position, a lot of healthcare people, and start arguing that he's going to end up with a knee or hip injury. Because he's got knee valgus. Now knee valgus just means that the knee is inward toward the center of the body versus the hip and the knee. So it kind of makes this in to out type of look. And that's, that's accurate, kind of. But let's zoom in and take the hip out of the equation. Now the knee is actually right over top of the foot, maybe even a little bit outside of it, as you can see here. So maybe it's not exactly knee valgus. And again, you could use the hip argument, but the other thing I would say is look at that lead hip. It's actually working its way toward the camera because that back hip is rotating away. So that's going to give an appearance of hip sliding forward that I don't think is totally true. If we drop the camera down in this bottom corner here, what I think you'd see is a lot less looking valgus, a lot less hip forward movement. Because sometimes the camera plays tricks on us. That's why in biomechanics we always want to have more than one camera view. The other thing is, is bend backward and his spine and trunk bending back, I think, again, makes that hip look really far forward. So I don't think he's truly in a massive amount of valgus here. I think he's in a small amount. I also would argue it's an unladed position, so it probably doesn't matter a ton. He's yet to drive through this leg very violently. And as he does that, what you're going to see is he starts to orient that line of force directly through the hip and knee, I think thus saving him a lot of uh, unwelcome stress on the knee. And you can see that here. Again, he started to push through and extend. But he's gotten this whole leg straightened out. If we took him out of that side bend, he would have a full straight line for his entire body. Um, so I think that's the first thing you have to notice about the swing. The second part is he clearly generates a lot of force. And let's talk about why. So at that same position we stopped earlier, that hip rotation creates an incredible amount of potential energy. That large amount of knee bend is even more potential energy because now he can extend through his knees, derotate his hips. He can also come out of that side bend of his spine. He can also throw his shoulders toward the court. Those are all sources of energy, and energy means force. We can see that in action again. As you see him work toward that, everything is coming out of rotation. Everything is straightening out. He drives to the ball, and then he actually rotates and bends and everything through the opposite direction. So it's something I'd encourage for anyone who really wants to crush a tennis serve is to find some amount of coil and some amount of knee and hip bend for potential energy. If you stay straight up and down, you're just not going to get the force. Uh, and you'll see that consistently across really every professional tennis player serves. As those shoulders and hips are going to rotate, away from the net to create the potential for energy and they're going to unwind rapidly as the body shifts toward the court and explodes with that energy and that's the last thing i want to talk about is look how far into the court he lands here see a lot of turn a lot of amateurs hit tennis serves and they're they finish either behind the baseline or right on top of the baseline and instead his first landing is a few feet in front of the baseline. Look at a few other sports. A baseball pitcher. What do they do before they throw to home plate? They step away from it. What does a quarterback do in football? They rotate away before rapidly rotating toward the receiver they're throwing the ball to. You see that in javelin throwing. You see it in really any sport where there's a throwing or wind-up motion. So always remember that you have to move away before moving toward if you want to generate maximum power. Obviously, there's some things you can't teach in Ben that help him out a lot, which would be, one, his size. That's something you can't teach. But again, I encourage you, if you're not getting the force you want in a serve, to 
try some of these techniques and see how they work out for you. Or at the very least, watch Ben understand his mechanics and have, have fun knowing it a little bit more. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments.